Hello everyone! Today is Thursday and um, we're going to Scrabble! Are we going to Scrabble, Bobby? Yes? But for now, we are going to try his new harness. Look at this. We bought it in B&M. And it's look cool. I want to try this first. Yeah? Can we try this on for you? And then, after this, we're getting ready to go to Scrabble. Yeah? We're gonna go walkies. Yeah? Walkie walkies. It's supposed to be like that, isn't it? That. There? Oh, good boy. I know you don't like it. Took your shit ears. It's back. But we need to have this for the safety. We put harness on so that um, when he when he was in the car, he had his own set belt. Let me see. What do you think, guys? Are you showing your friend your harness, Bobby? Come on. Are you not happy, my love? Huh? Mm. He's not happy. Look at him. <laughs> What's wrong, love? What's wrong, Baba? Saying hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bobby the Irish Dog channel. And look at me. I'm going to school. Okay, say bye bye. See you in a bit, everybody. Bye bye. We are here in Scrabble, everybody. What is that? <laughs> Hello, everybody in New Zealand. I hope you're having socks, fish, and chops tonight. What are you going to say again? <laughs> Could you tell the story about that tower? Okay. <laughs> um, this is Scrabo Tower, and it was built after the Irish potato famine, the Great Hunger, which happened from 1845 to 1848. A lot of uh, landlords, landowners, didn't look after their peasants and drove them off the land because they didn't pay rent on their holdings. Uh, about a third of Ireland died, a third emigrated, left only a third of the people here. Um, the landlord here though um, looked after the people who had, um, who rented his property and after, sometime after the famine, this tower was erected in memorial of him um, for looking after the people and feeding them during the time. That's very good, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, but from the top of here, this is just above Newton Ards, which is just at the top of the Str of Strangford Lock in County Down. Strangford Lock is over there. And down that way are the Mountains of Morn, which is what C.S. Lewis, who was from Belfast, wrote about uh, as Narnia. So, the Chronicles of Narnia were based, the line in which the waterman was based on the countryside in those mountains. The other side of those mountains then is into the Republic of Ireland, um, Carlingford Lock and onto County Louth. Um, if you look out this way, you see uh, we're looking uh, north towards North towards County Antrim that way, and then you'll go through that Scotland, those mountains on the horizon, which might not show up very well on your camera, are uh, the mountains of the Galloway Hills of Scotland, and then there's the coast of, um, of uh, County Antrim that way. So that way, that is Belfast over there, and beyond that then is um, it's Belfast. Black Mountain and uh, Napoleon's Nose. Yeah, the mountain cave hill and Napoleon's nose. That's the mount. Those are the mountains that overlook Belfast. Belfast straddles the River Lagan, 
and the northern part is in County Antrim, the southern part is in County Down. So Belfast kind of straddles two Irish counties. The River Lagan comes through Belfast, and flows the other side of that hill, and this is Belfast Lock, which then opens out and over here, you'll see a headland over there. That's Whitehead. So that's the that's the County Antrim there. The Giant's Causeway is all directly ahead of you, up to the north. And that is the edge of uh, Whitehead and County Antrim. And then we're on the County Down side of the southern part of the loch. The loch opens out into the Irish Sea, and the land that's visible, the other side of that is. The Mull of Kintyre in Scotland. It's only about 11 miles from Valley Castle area across to the Mull of Kintyre. Um, and from here, we're closest to the mountains that are over there. Uh, it seems quite clearly here by the naked eye, anyway. And there is that is the Peninsula that sticks out in Dumfries and Galloway with Stranraer, Ken Ryan, Port Patrick in Scotland on the other side. So you drive down the, the road to the A57, I think, is that right? All the way to Stranraer, and then the ferry comes across up the lock and into Belfast. And that's the closest convenient point, really. It's only about, uh, about 13 miles. So we live in Bangor over there, and we're actually closer on a map to the coast of Scotland than we are to Belfast, which is only about a 20 minute drive down the road. So it's quite close, well, very close. Really. So people could always see in history, way, way, way long, long time, like long time ago, people who started to settle in Ireland after the last ice age receded 10,000 years ago, um, who arrived in the southwest of Ireland from the Iberian Peninsula and the Mediterranean. Human settlers started to re-inhabit this island. And as they moved up through Ireland, up this area, of course they could see Scotland over there. Now, Ireland was covered in forests. A lot of Ireland's forests were, take, were cut down to build uh, Royal Navy warships during the days of sail. It took about 7,000 trees to build one man of war. So a lot of Ireland's trees were decimated at that time. And when you had trees everywhere, it was quite hard to move across countryside. You had different clans, you had animals, you had all kinds of... Um, difficult terrain to cross, dangerous places to cross. So the seas were the highways of the day and the motorways of the day and people used boats to move about. So of course if you've come to the coast, you can see the coast of Scotland over there. So we ended up with a place called Lula, which is where the word Ulster comes from, um, and the kingdom of Dalryda. And that was basically a coastal kingdom that existed along the coast of Northern Ireland, was, was now Northern Ireland and the west coast of Scotland. So that's why you have so many people like me in this area of Ireland who have mixed Scottish and Irish blood. So I'm 67% Irish, 30% uh, uh, Scots, and then 3% Viking, which would be my dad's side from Donegal, where the Vikings used to land. Donegal means the castle of the foreigners. So that's where the Vikings landed a lot, and they landed down in Dublin as well. In the mix with the Vikings over the years, so I would think most people in the north of Ireland have some, well a lot of Ireland have some, in some areas have some Viking blood that tint of it. Um, certainly with the naked eye, that, this coast of Scotland there is very clear today. Some days you come you can't see it at all, some days you come and you can see all the farm. shipbuilding. There were 147 shipyards in Glasgow at one time. And our shipyards were over that way. You're not able to see them with that camera, them, but there are two, two what, what were the, large, the largest crates in the world, I don't know if they still are, um, which were built for shipbuilding. And that's where the Titanic and her sister ships were all built in, on the 
uh, completed in 1912. My grandfather and his brothers were painters involved in those jobs. Um, during World War II, Belfast was quite badly bombed. They didn't think it was within range of German bombers, but it was. Uh, some of them flew down from Norway, I believe, um, and kind of took Belfast by surprise and bombed the shipyards. There was a lot of industrial there were industrial plants here making ball bearings, there were rope works, the Soroka rope works and um, shipyards and everything. And uh, the Easter bombing, which was in the, in the April, what year are we at? 1940. Um, so very, very badly bombed. Badly bombed. The people from Belfast went up onto the hills and uh, Cave Hill, evacuated up there to then sit up there and they saw the city being bombed very badly. Northern Ireland was, according to Winston Churchill, was a very important strategic place during the war because it's the most northwesterly, it's the most northwesterly part of the UK. So uh, aircraft that were leaving from Canada and the US to get to Europe, bomber aircraft, transport aircraft, the troops and material would sail or would them um, so would fly into Northern Ireland. Uh, ships, lots of ships that were coming could pass here, landing troops. A lot of American GIs uh, landed here. Um, in Bangor, the pier there is called Eisenhower Pier because Eisenhower addressed the USGIs before they sailed from there to go and land uh, the Normandy beaches. Um, so it's still, um, still called that, named after him. But this is always quite an important place, just down the coast from us. Over that direction, there's a place called Crimson, and that was the big port at the time. And that's where um, General Schomburg landed. Moved from County Armagh and then the other side from up in Armagh to Antrim, then down to uh, Belfast. Um, there were almost all, all women folks certainly were weavers and linen spinners. And um, the linen industry took off, and Belfast was at the time was the wealthiest city in the British Empire. Um, the linen was world famous, but it was also used when aircraft started to. Uh, be designed and invented. Um, most aircraft back in the early 20th century had Belfast linen as the fabric on their wings and uh, fuselages, which was then painted with dope, dope um, with a sort of glaze. And Belfast really grew up. But if you look at any old older maps of Ireland, Belfast is nothing but a tiny dot in a little river. And um, what the main place was was Bangor, which is where we live. And Bangor is one of the most important ecclesiastical places for Christianity and uh, for Christendom in the world because when the Holy Ro when the Roman Empire collapsed and the Visigoths and all the different uh, peoples took over and were warring around in Central Europe, um, the monks in Bangor Abbey kept Christianity alive, they uh, wrote Bibles, they formed other place, uh, other holy uh, sites in Iona in Scotland and in Lindisfarne in Northumbria and the ones from here, a group of them took small coral type boats and they sailed across to Scotland, as you can see, down the coast of Scotland and Great Britain, all the way down the eastern coast of Great Britain, and across the English Channel and up towards uh, the Netherlands and then down the Rhine and they followed the Rhine on those boats all the way down uh, to the Swiss, uh, the area of Switzerland and Austria. Centre and then Bangor, and then the other places that are now bigger don't appear on those maps at all. 